Today we're going to learn how to add and subtract time units when that, that involve both minutes and seconds. Let's take a look at some examples. The first thing we want to do is subtract the minutes. In this case, 8 minutes minus 1 minute. That's just going to be 7 minutes. After that, take the seconds and subtract the seconds. 56 minus 8. That's just going to be 48 seconds. So that's going to be the amount of time. 7 minutes, 48 seconds. Here we go again. This one's a little more complicated. First subtract the minutes. 6 minus 3. 3 minutes. So far, so good. 28 minus 33. Uh-oh. That would be negative 5 seconds. But negative 5 seconds doesn't make any sense. We can't go backwards in time. So what we do in this case is borrow a minute. This three minutes becomes two minutes plus 60 seconds. That's the same amount of time because 60 seconds is equal to a minute. But this will allow us to do the subtraction. 60 seconds minus five seconds gives us 55 seconds. So our final answer is 2 minutes plus 55 seconds. I know it's a little confusing, but we'll see some more examples. This is an easier example. First, we do the minutes. 7 minus 5 is 2 minutes. 36 seconds minus 7 seconds is going to be 29 seconds. So our answer should be 2 minutes and 29 seconds. Here we're going the other way. Now we're going to add. And we've switched from minutes and seconds to hours and minutes. But the process is exactly the same. First add your bigger units. 4 plus 6. 10 hours. Then 54 plus 48. 54 plus 48 is going to be 102 minutes. But if we look at our answer choices, 102 minutes is not an option. But we didn't make a mistake. We just have to do the same thing we did before, but in reverse. Rather than borrowing an hour, we have created an extra hour. This is the same as 60 minutes plus 42 minutes, which we can turn into an extra hour. So rather than 10 hours and 102 minutes, that's 11 hours and 42 minutes. Here's another example. Subtract the hours first. 4 minus 2, 2 hours. Then 7 minus 22, uh-oh, negative 15 minutes. So what do we do? We break the 2 hours up into 1 hour plus 60 minutes. Then we just subtract the 15 from the 60, giving us 60 minus 15, or 45 minutes. So our answer will be 1 hour and 45 minutes. And there we go. Now we're going even further. We're going past hours all the way to days. But again, we just do the same thing. First add the big units, five days, plus four days, total of nine days. Then add the hours, three hours, 
plus 11 hours is 14 hours. And because 14 is less than a whole day, we don't need to do anything else. Nine days, 14 hours is going to be our answer. Here we go again. Now we're subtracting with days and hours. First, subtract the days. 9 minus 5 is 4. Then 1 minus 11 is negative 10 hours. Let's do the same thing we did before. Borrow a day. So instead of four days, it's three days plus 24 hours. Then subtract. So it's 24 minus the 10 gives us 14 hours left over. So three days and 14 hours. This one's easier. There are no days to subtract in the second number. So it's nine minus zero because there are zero days there. So that's nine days. Then we subtract our hours just like before. Six minus three is three hours. So nine days, three hours. Now we're going one step further. We've done seconds, minutes, hours, days, and now weeks. But we keep doing the same thing. Subtract the big unit. Seven weeks minus two weeks is five weeks. Then one day minus zero days, because no days are listed, is one day. So this is five weeks and one day. We don't need to can't borrow anything because there's no negative numbers. One last example. First, subtract the weeks. Two weeks minus zero is two weeks. One day minus six days is negative five days. But just like before, negative time doesn't make any sense. So two weeks are instead one week plus seven days. Then we can just do seven minus five, giving us two days for one week and two days. And that's going to be our answer. So that's the general process we want to use with these mixed time problems. Add the big unit then add the small unit. If you need to combine or borrow for subtraction, do that. But make sure you do the big units first so that that number is worked out before you do your, your combining or borrowing. It just works out easier that way.